In this video, I'm going to show you a few basic light modifiers and what they do. Light modifiers can change the shape and quality of light, and any serious photographer should have a few of these if they want to create the right lighting for their scene. I have my flash equipped with a magnetic adapter so I can quickly add something on top of it, like a snoot. I'll show you how the effects of this snoot and other modifiers compare to a bare flash, which is a hard light source. But first, let's start with what I think is essential, a softbox. A softbox is an enclosure with reflective interior walls and diffusion material in front where the light escapes. It's designed so that the diffusion material is much larger than the light source and further away. And the bigger the apparent light source, the softer the light. Let's have a look at how this small softbox modifies the light. First, the bare flash. Notice the spread in the hard shadows around the black board. And now, fitted with the small softbox. The light is more contained, but the shadows are still a bit hard because the diffusion is only about twice as big as the flash head. Here's what the light looks like pointed down at this minifigure from about 6 inches away. Look at the spread of light to the background and the shadow cast from the minifigure. This is a larger softbox in its stored state. It works the same way as the smaller one I just showed you enclosed with reflective material inside and diffusion material in front. This is a little more than twice as big, so I'm sure you can guess what the quality of this light will be like. The bare flash, and with the larger softbox on. The shadows are softer than before, but the intensity is much lower since the light is spreading over a larger diffusion material. It's also closer to the background since I didn't move the flash, and this softbox is deeper. On the minifig, the shadows are much softer. That's again because the diffusion material is much larger, and it's only about 3 inches away now since the softbox itself is deeper. This is a snoot, and I love saying snoot. This snoot is shaped like a cone, but other snoots are shaped like toots. Snoots create a spotlight effect. You can see how tight that light is focused. It's a hard light, of course, but a very controlled one. Gels are translucent sheets of color. This is a blue one slipped into a magnetic gel holder. You can use these to correct color or for creative color. Here it's the round adapter affecting the shape of the light, not the gel. The gel has colored the light and reduced its intensity. The color effect is obvious, but it's still a hard light on its own. A grid restricts light through its honeycomb tubes. Grids work similar to a snoot, but with softer edges around the light. They can come in different degrees like 25, 45, and so on, which result in wider spotlights as they increase. Here's the bare flash. Here's a spotlight using the grid. It's a hard light source, of course, but the transition of the shadow around the edge of the light is softer. These are barn doors, and like the snoot and grid before, restrict light. You can probably tell that the shape of the light is not going to be round, though, but more rectangular. Each of these doors can be moved independently, so you can focus the light more precisely. Here's what the light looks like when I've closed the barn doors so that they are touching each other's edges. The shadow on the edge of the light is more defined than the grids, but not as dark as the snoots. So now let's have a look at the effects of these six light modifiers side by side. First, the shapes and the shadows on the wall. The flash stayed in the same spot, about six inches away from the black background, and the modifiers were just fitted over them. I used a black background because my white wall would just bounce light everywhere and make it hard to see the pattern of light. Then the effect on a LEGO minifig. 
Again, the flash stayed in the same position, pointing down at the minifig from camera left. So it's easy to see how light modifiers can really be useful in your toy photography in creating focus or mood. If you're just starting out, I think a softbox is essential. Thanks for watching this intro into modifying light. I haven't covered all the modifiers, but I'll do that in another video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more toy photography goodness. This is 4 Bricks Tall. Catch you next time.